dead or alive, dead, yes, or alive. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hi, Langston. Hey, he, Taylor. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you to be here. I'm so excited to be here. This is like a long time coming. Literally, I feel like we've been talking about this since I don't even remember. I don't know, but I was going to be on somebody's date list. Um, <laughs> if, it, if it took a little longer. Yo, please. <laughs> we are not manifesting death. Well, I'm here now, so it's not going to happen. Prayer, but right. I would have been it took a little longer. It did, it did take a long time. Don't judge me. Oh, my God. Now you're going to have these people thinking. <laughs> I just got them all out here waiting, which I do. If this is a popular show. This is on high demand. It's it's really not. It's um, I guess we just I just take a long time to book things. It's okay. And I apologize, but anyways, how are you? I'm amazing. You're amazing. I'm amazing. I love that. That's the you. camera. I say I'm, I'm amazing. I'm feeling good as hell. <laughs> what are you drinking in that solo cup that you came in? I can't tell you. It's a blue cup. Now why do you keep <laughs> saying stuff you can't say? What it's it a is. blue cup. It's a little bit of. <laughs> <laughs> <It's a laughs> <so> <laughs> Actually, I think I would rather have not known. See, that's what she was all over my cup. I really was because it looked it looked like it was tasty. I it is. Know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, we'll we'll rethink that. We'll revisit it. I thought you liked tequila. I do. I like everything. You do. I'm like an equal opportunist oh, when it comes. I'm not equal. When it comes to liquor, like I'm, open bars. Yeah. Yes, I'm an open bar champion. Perfect. I'm not into Jägermeister. Uh, I'm not into like. A lot of hard, hard beers. Yeah, like IPAs and yeah. stuff. Yeah. But alcohol, like, yeah. <laughs> but alcohol, yeah. Yeah, tequila, Bombay, rum, oh, gin. Oh, Bombay is a gin. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, all the like the stuff. Oh, I love that for you. I'm so picky. I love it for me too. <laughs> <laughs> every time is a good time. Right. And everybody's like, oh, uh, don't mix dark with light. I'm just like, Yolo. this is your liver, not laundry, okay? <laughs> Get it together. Oh Grow up. <laughs> yo, yo, hell no. Nah. The hangovers, if you mix all that stuff together, are we kidding? I don't believe we get hangovers like that no more. You don't get hangovers. Yeah. I feel like gross for like 30 minutes when I wake up, but then I'm good. All right. Langston. So, well, I ask everybody this who's like an artist or who has like a, what do you call it? A name that's not your actual name? How do you know what my actual name is? I don't, but that's okay. what I was going to ask you first and foremost. <laughs> also, I do know what your name is because you gave me your email and that had your actual name on it, I think. No, it didn't. Mm, no? Mm -mm. Okay. Well, oh, it did. I know. <laughs> it did. Because I thought it was like a media release. I'm like, trying to be professional on those. I love it. I love it. Okay. So, my first name is. Uh, but my middle name is Langston, uh, and I didn't really go by it for a while, but like I really got into songwriting. Uh, my mom is really into poetry, so my sister's name is Maya. Oh. I'm Langston. Um, and I kind of like was just like, I want a new start with, with a name, mm -hmm. and what better way than the name from a writer, a prolific writer, um, who's so important to black history, black arts movement, et cetera, um, then use that. And then with blue, it's just the best color. That's your favorite color? Yes, and it was it really wasn't my favorite favorite color for a while. I don't know where I just started liking blue as an adult. And like, like when I was a kid, blue was not my thing. Yeah. But like as an adult, like I'm like I love blue. everything's blue. I love that for you though. So everything's on brand. Look at the blue jacket, oh my God. blue hat, blue shoes. Hold on, it's a shoe cam. <laughs> Look at this, this Please, leg. Please, the way. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> the way you try to put your leg I'm like, up. I'm like, wait, please. You, you see it? You see Damn, it? I was gonna wear. I was gonna wear all blue, but I thought it would clash if we both had a different. You have on, you have on blue right now, so I it's guess. good. This counts. I have like a whole ass blue ass outfit, oh. and I was like, this is gonna be a thing. But then I was like, would that be too much? It's never too much when you're with Langston Blue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. How long have you been like a singer songwriter? I've been a singer. I've been a singer for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I've been a singer for a long time since like I was a kid. I was like in musicals. Uh, oh really? The musicals. Then I was in the opera for a little bit. I was in Washington National Opera and Hansel and Gretel as a kid. Um, it was the first like that. That is, I think it was the first music money I actually made ever. Really? Yeah. Um, and then I went to Performing Arts High School where I studied classical voice. Where'd you go? Did you go to high school here? Nah, I'm from DC. Oh. So I went to Duke Ellington School of the Arts for a little bit. 
uh yes it was cool um so then when i got to college uh i kind of got more into songwriting mm -hmm. and then i was just like i have to sing my whole life i can write songs um let me go right now where i'm in i'm in college i was studying music business and i was like oh, this, yeah. right now i have my a meal plan <laughs> yeah. i have a dorm uh so i have a place to stay i'm not paying any bills why not try to pursue a music career right now? Uh -huh. So I started in college, just like doing open mics uh -huh. and stuff around campus and stuff. Where'd you go to school? I went to Middle Tennessee State University. Okay, whose okay. Th color is also blue. <laughs> this is and one of the mottos is true blue. Okay. The Blue Raiders. God's yeah. Plan. Um and yeah, and then when I came to Atlanta, it was like a whole different like playing field. And that's mm -hmm. when I think I really, really locked in is once I got to the city. Atlanta just inspires something and I think creatives to just like be their best brightest black Literally self really pursue yeah and i felt like just so unlocked yeah once i got here and so that's really where like i gotta give a lot of credit to atlanta it's like where i really started really locking in on yeah. my future and what i wanted to do and my creativity so yeah so somebody who's in this room right now told me that you used to write country music is this true <laughs> <laughs> okay so i lived in nashville i lived in oscars in nashville for college mm -hmm. and i was in nashville a lot uh my best friend is a country singer britney spencer really so we've written tons of songs in the comfort of our old apartment uh that one day britney might put one of those songs out britney's an amazing country singer uh <laughs> she's on tour with Mary morris shameless plug yeah black country singer i love it. black thick ass country singer from baltimore maryland oh i'm gonna go listen to yeah her. she's hard so yes i've written tons of country songs in that aspect and then just like i feel like r&b and country are so similar in yeah. the storytelling and the vocal capability that at times like depending on what guitars i was playing with anything you could turn into yeah. a country song and vice versa so but yeah country music nashville tennessee y'all 615 <laughs> I love, I love Nashville it. has a special place in my heart because I feel like Nashville was like Atlanta's where I locked in yeah but like Nashville was what really strengthened me as a songwriter and because of like the different genres that exist like there's so much gospel history in Nashville um freaking Jill Scott lives in Nashville like it's so much different things R&B rock rap etc that happened there that it really um I had to get really creative with all those different genres and collaborating working with people from all different walks of life yeah that seems like so yeah. interesting though i couldn't even see i don't know a lot of people that i know now like everybody i've known has lived in atlanta like this whole time i feel like they've been pursuing like music so yeah. i don't know like it's, it's, it's really interesting but atlanta is also like when you think about it like it's just everything is really comes back it, this has become like the new mecca yeah from the gospel uh -huh. from gospel to hip-hop to r&b everybody who has to make that kind of music comes here yeah you can't make that kind of music and not be here and for like the last 10 15 years atlanta has really had everything literally everything on lock so the, ho the hottest rapper little babies from here right one of the hottest the hottest r&b singer some walkers from here damn i for wow yeah so it's just I'm like forgetting who's from here all Go the fire ass gospel here. singers live here this is crazy landria johnson's here the world everybody's in the i love yeah. it let's talk about the motion oh <laughs> <laughs> why did you just say oh i, like know, I was not expecting that right there what <laughs> um yeah I'm the motion sorry i was just like that is my song you're like damn songs, did i make that song because yeah, y'all like, be trying to pay the a-side dust and i don't like that Burn. um but yeah the motions uh it is a song that I think everybody in a relationship could relate to. The back and forth, the ups and downs, the things you go through. And all, every down is not toxic. Yeah. And every up is not like the best love ever. So it, like it can be tailored to fit a lot of different relationships. That sometimes I feel like you get in this routine of things. And it's the motions. And they do say also, because like being crazy in love, that... What is it? Insanity is doing the same thing over oh, and over yeah. again. So, in that aspect. So, yeah. So, the motions um, is a two-side single. Uh, A-side is like an up-tempo, uh -huh. housey joint, which I love. You said I people love. be paying the A-side does? Yes. I feel like that's the one I was And then the B-side is like this super emotional, like, Phil Collins meets, like, Chris Brown and Brian McKnight R&B version. Um... That's what people say, like Michael Jackson. Which I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Okay. Cause I, I hear that like now, the motions on the B side. Yeah, and I'm just like, wow, I did not hear 
that but like he he um shimon <laughs> but yeah so like Psy A, I wrote first like fresh out of essence fest with the essence fest yeah. and i came back and i had written the song and i was just like you know i really just want to dance you know what i mean um i really did and after what is it honestly never mind mm-hmm. and like uh, break my soul and stuff like that i just was just like like i want to have on the dance floor too you know what I mean? yeah. so i made the song and then like in my head i was like oh for some content later on i can like slow the song down because mm-hmm. the words really mean something and then like i just laid like a demo down uh for the b-side and that became like the b-side everyone was just like oh my gosh i love this and what's so funny is that the b-side is all in one take really yeah from the beginning to end that's why there's no harmonies there's no stacks there's no extra ad libs so cool. it's all in one take i love it from one beginning take to end and some of the even the timing is a little off because i really just let like emotions of the motions <laughs> kind of guide me you know what i mean yeah i'm doing that so that's the motions i love it so much yeah. like i wasn't expecting it to have this much like love and like E-pro. this much motion please, please, <laughs> this motion has this much no, motion every like time. yeah the e like i can cuss on here right yeah, yeah. no i'm screaming yeah the e <laughs> really like just like caught me off guard because like, i did e before but it was like this was like a way different feeling it was a new energy in myself like, yeah musically that kind of happened and with this one like i wrote the motions all by myself like before in the past like my last thing song i had on there but like, anything i had i was writing with the writing partner yeah. and like this i didn't do any of that with that person and me and that person aren't cool anymore but mm-hmm. I, so but sometimes you have these things that happen where you think a person could be more involved in your stuff yeah and be more responsible for your stuff and you really have to especially in this collaborative industry we're in you could be thinking that maybe it's not you that's that good you know what i mean yeah maybe it's everything around it but um this song really gave me my confidence back i think uh as like mm-hmm. a solo singer songwriter mm-hmm. from beginning to end i wrote this song and that's for me a big thing that I'm loving. And people resonating with a song that like I wrote, and it's like everyone's like, "Oh, like what were you going through during that?" Like I'm a person who like does not really disclose. Like, no, it's not like, even that. Like uh, I don't have nothing to disclose. Uh, like, I'm <laughs> like I'm not a person who like ever is really in like relationships like that. Yeah. But like I know what it feels like to be like even like in a relationship with music. I'm yeah. Going through the motions, like like some one day you're up, one day you're down. Are you tired of going crazy? Yes, I'm tired of being broke funding this shit. I'm tired of singing these songs. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and it could be about friendships. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? You go through these cycles and relationships in general have cycles. So, and then it's also relationships I've been around where I've seen people go through the motions. We see that sometimes with even aunts and aunts aunts and aunties that's the same thing shout out to the aunts and aunties though aunts and aunties but the, uh, we see aunts and uncles we see it with spouses in general <laughs> the uncles and uncles you know we see it and it's a thing i think that everybody can relate to so i'm happy everybody's resonating with it i'm happy ebro with it I'm happy so apple good. with it like Woo! they put it like high on the playlist i was like i didn't even know i was on there i was asleep and my homegirl jasmine texted me and she was like oh my gosh and she sent me a screenshot she was like did you know about this and i was just like no that's so awesome let's check my email and i get an email from apple and it's like oh we've added your song i'm like oh shit. oh my god this is hard and then like a few hours later the email, the email came and i was just like wait okay, that's apple? crazy yeah okay, for real. Okay, steve jobs <laughs> in the grave looking out ah yo this is right, steve are, jobs. Bro, bro. i have nothing to say to that first of all your live performances, I feel like that's how I don't even think I Did knew speak, you before. Speak ever? No, okay. but like literally I saw you at Finders Keepers one time mm-hmm. and you were performing. I went with my friend, I was like, oh, I was like, hey, what's up? We never met before, blah blah blah. Oh yeah. And then you performed and I was like, what the f this <laughs> singing like for real, for real. I was like, okay, so I'm a fan, not okay, just like thank a, you, thank online. You. That was a good show. <laughs> it was like you're like in the corral yeah. walking around with videos of you. I was like, <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was. I was in my R and B like in your bag. Yeah, I was in my. my that it was my like selfie. I said. Whoa. Yeah, that was a good show. That was so good, and it was so many people there yeah. too. It was like such a good crowd, and it was an open bar. Was it? Yeah. See, I be getting places too late, y'all. Uh, yeah. I be missing the open bars. It was a nice little open bar situation. Al but then I saw you at uh, what you call it a few weeks ago. At um the little little, the little blue room, yeah, a little blue room. Oh my god, you were so. And that was just motions. That was just a whole set <laughs> of the motions. Oh, was stripped down with guitar. Man, that <laughs> so good. It was, it was. I'm not saying it was so good. It was so fun because I literally like felt like a rock star that day. It, it was, was raining. Steps, like it, it, it was raining like crazy. <laughs> oh like, yeah, it was. I had like 
it was just not my day. I had on like a hoodie, some rain boots, like a blue <laughs> jacket. If you know to know me, I'm usually yeah. like always like trying to dress up. So I was like real like incognito. You really were, because when you came in, you was like with the hood on. I was like, uh, like, I'm so what's up? You're like, okay, oh, hey, Taylor. I'm like, what's yeah, not to depress or anything. I just, it was a lot going on. I'm screwed. So, yeah, so then when I finally like got to the, like to sit down and, and the guitar started going, I started talking to the crowd. I realized that that was the first time I had ever performed the motions. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so like, that's great. why I think it, was, it felt. Didn't it feel really emotional? It was so good. Yeah, it was it like the really whole emotional. room was just like so tuned in. And I it was, was so just great. like, damn, I really feel like I've been going through some. I, I really don't. feel like <laughs> I be writing it though, like, but like, I love people who can write though from that like point of view, even though they haven't necessarily been through X Y Z. It's yeah, like I'm I can like, still yeah, put I together that like song. A, a precaution: these songs are right. Like you don't want to go through this. You remember that song you wrote? You don't want to go through that. Yeah, shit. literally, it's like uh, you, that <laughs> well, shit you, you said. That shit, this is the shit you said you wouldn't do in that song. And that is what you have to live by. Then that's so true. Okay, so speaking of the motion, are you going to put out in? album anytime Ooh. soon me trying not to curse but okay yeah do. so the emotions remix ep okay is coming um so that's really exciting the song like i said it's a side a side b mm-hmm. some producers i love like um if you listen to my debut project blue sad Eye and john mario mm-hmm. who did like most of that project they've done remixes for the um song nice um who else a uh, sunset who's super fire worked like dom kennedy and stuff he got this like crazy new orleans bounce one um, but there's a lot of people, producers and DJs who I love, mm-hmm. who have really been showing the record love. So like, we're gonna kind of just reimagine like these rollouts are not short. Yeah, music, no. making this music <laughs> is not cheap. Exactly. Keep spreading this thing out. But yeah, Ooh. so that's what I'm working on now. Uh, I got some other little songs I'm working on and trying to figure out like, do I want to do an EP? Yeah, everyone. And I'm working on so much music. Mm-hmm. I have like, okay, this EP is this vibe and this EP is that. Cause right. being a songwriter first, like I could write anything. I, I hear a hot beat. That's like, I'm, I hear a hot beat. Sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I be so like a dance. I, I hear a wicked hot beat, and I'm just like, wow, <laughs> I really gotta lay down some lyrics to that. <laughs> <laughs> so then I do, so then I'm just like, I don't know what I really want, what I do. And so I'm gonna let the emotions drag on a little bit longer while I kind of figure it out. But I got a lot of cool music coming. Um, I got a lot of dope ass rapper friends that I got some stuff going with. Uh, yeah. No, I'm nosy. And then I'm just like writing also. Like, that's been really good. I've been writing for other people as well. Uh, or mostly just for yourself. My many different personalities, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, I heard. Like, I've been writing, um, but for, for like the most part, I used to really be focused so much on trying to get a record placed. Yeah. And like either trying to work with the right producers, but I think like now, everything is kind of happening like more organic and more natural. So who knows? There might be a song sitting on my hard drive that mm-hmm. I had nothing to do with putting out anything like that and then like it's a song on summer project or something. Mm-hmm. that's how things work sometimes so i'm being really patient with that and until then i'm just writing and singing and performing uh i got some cool shows coming up i'm doing Ooh. what is it um what is it i know what you're doing but it's called something kickback else fest. kickback fest yes it is <laughs> see when you book so much it's kind of hard to keep track of it's like i'm screaming <laughs> <laughs> when you do so much yeah, it's kind of hard to keep track of all the places i'm supposed to be literally me me. goes one place a week i'm like where am i supposed to go (laughs) what was happening today (laughs) anyways oh man oh but that's alabama yeah that's gonna be fun it's gonna be real fun i I went last time i've never been to alabama i got family from alabama really yeah from like aniston where's that don't know but it's in alabama (laughs) Um. (laughs) i don't know Well, everybody come out to Kickback Fest. Yeah, in Montgomery. Oh, Surf said. Oh, I love I'm going to pick somebody who's <laughs> dead or something like that. That one I understood. The shocking Surf's having a moment right now. He is. Uh, he's going crazy. Yeah. Shout Seeing out to the whole team. The pictures of him beating Post Malone. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do the fire one alive. I'm going to say Post Malone. Hey, yo. Surf Malone. You Number don't have to do it right now. We can go. Find you. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was, was so like, cool. <laughs> Cause he literally he came here it. and did the interview before he met Post Malone, and then that <laughs> happened. And I was like, "This is oh, that's beautiful." To crazy. See. It was like a week later. Like Rap ass Hallmark moment. Literally, like, I was like, "This is so awesome. hard." Yeah, it is. I'm so proud of him and his whole team. They're yeah. so good. All right. Shout out to track team. Shout out to track team. Shout out to Sherwin. Shout out to Sam. Another Sam sir. What we're gonna do? Mm-hmm. You're gonna say, well, three people that you want to meet, dead or alive, and why. So just go one, say them, okay, and then say why, and et cetera, et cetera, whatever people say. Okay. Uh, 
I should have like thought about this before I came up here. Uh, <laughs> one, it's okay. Andre Harrell. Okay, okay, uh, okay. What's the reasoning? Like he really like introduced that like fly, shit, like uh, uptown, bougie, stylistic shit to like R&B hip hop. Shit he do Mary J Blige, Jodeci. Um, I'm a really big music business nerd, so Andre Harrell is definitely uh, on my list. He just, well, I think what the, the vibe he brought for black music at that time. I just feel like it was super dope and like it's like something that I look to you know yeah. what I mean? for inspiration. Like I love getting fly and like when I listen to or look at Jodeci uh -huh. and I look at Albie Shore and Mary and everybody from that camp, there was just such this flyness and this coolness that I think really doesn't really exist in R and B right now. Yeah. Um well, yeah. There's me, but like there's a <laughs> period. I know that's right. But there's, there's some right. peers. But yeah. <laughs> But Only a few. I, there's some peers out there. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. But like, I really feel like he really introduced that and through him, there's so many musical roots that come down. Like even with like Puffy coming from under him, like it's like wild. So, Diddy. yeah, Diddy, Brother Love, all of his names. <laughs> Oof, Diddy. Anyways, D Diddy's alive, and I met him before, so I'm not gonna put him on this list. Ooh, yeah, you don't do that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, number two. Number two. Whitney Houston. I feel like we would have a really fun time together. She has a, like a funny sense of humor. I'm sorry, I didn't mean look at the camera like that. A funny sense of humor, a really <laughs> awesome personality. Um, from what I've seen and heard from people who did meet her. Um, That's so cool. And like, yeah, and anyone that can have fun with Brown can have fun with me. Like, Vibe Brown was some cool. Like, <laughs> I feel like he was other. Shit. That's fun. Like that's just an exciting time. <laughs> it's an exciting time. So Whitney, definitely. Like I just feel like she has so many stories to tell. Like all her interviews I watch back are so fucking funny. You know they're making a movie about her. They did. They oh it's already out. It's already out. Oh my god. It's like the fifth one. Wait, I was literally at the like, movies yesterday. Years. And it's I, called like I wanna dance with somebody. Damn, maybe I'll look at it when I get home. Well no, it's probably in the theaters. It's in but... the theater theaters. <sighs> Sissy want her money. Yeah, no, and she should. Speaking of um, theaters, but anyways. Who else? Who's alive? <laughs> There's people that like I want to meet. I'm like I'm scared. Of yeah. Like, what the hell. Like I kind of like Beyonce being an enigma. Like we're not letting you say Beyonce. Beyonce being an enigma. <laughs> it's like great. Like I don't want like your essence. Like, yeah. I, just can't I don't it. know what. You're not real. You're not in proximity. Like, Could you even imagine being like? No. That's why I can't put her on list. Like in a building with Beyonce right now, I feel like I would feel. The air would be gone. <laughs> she was in the room. I'm like I'd in be the dead building. or alive. I'd be. Oh my god. Beyonce come through this. <laughs> that would be Somebody insane. get the inhaler. Uh, <laughs> I got one in my purse. <laughs> shout out to all the asthmatics. For real though, I've been struggling. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what? The person that you just said was the dream, yeah. but you said his real name oh, is Terry's that was Nash. I see. I didn't even. I see he changed his name. He didn't might be Terry Nash anymore. The dream is was was at SCAD or is at SCAD. I don't know if he graduated or not yet, hmm. but like he's been doing like candles and home decor type stuff really and even some clothes i want to say he has a fragrance or something like he's just been like like putting it together i think we have the money to do so and the passion and the dreams you could do anything no absolutely but like no the dream i can't believe it. the dream Whoa. I'm surprised you haven't met him. we have not met yet with reagan's brother we've been the in one like the same rooms kind of but like not at the same time yeah i feel like atlanta's one big room as well no it literally is you could run into anybody any day and the then be there so the dream i would love to yeah i would love the dream to learn from and like i'm really big on like in stories like yeah. i want to hear like what was going on when you did single ladies you know what i mean insane and all these songs like what, what, what was this thing that's happening here like yeah i'm really curious about that yeah i love like studio session stories yeah. they're always like the most absurd like i do like these podcasts and <laughs> some of them are, like problematic as hell but like some are like really cool Cause you hear all these stories mm -hmm. you never knew existed, and like it adds a certain new layer to certain works of art. Now, mm -hmm. and you listen to the song, you're I like, "This is how commentary, it's like on like stuff like that." Yeah, no, I agree. What was I listening to? I don't even know. Oh, Link's they were talking blue. about who? Um, what are you say? <laughs> we're listening to you listening to Link from the exactly. <laughs> the press is playing in the middle of the episode, just like a break of just music. Those are good answers, though. All of those are really Thank good. You. So I said. Andre Harrell, Whitney Houston, and The Dream. Those are good. And they all black. And they, uh, see, you ain't even need yeah. a long time to think about it. Those are great. Okay, so since you've written country music before and you're just talking about different genres, mm -hmm. would you write any other music that wasn't R&B for yourself? 
yes i really still really would love to be in like a pop type band yeah oh i was like pop punk but like growing up i really loved fallout boy i really loved yes. gym class heroes yes. also was like a super big like black eyed peas fan omg like, i love so, this like to be in some kind of like funky pop i could like, see you thing. in some like, like that. being like a front man so like doing something like that even like being like in maroon five that would be like, insane me being a black ass adam levine would be so fun <laughs> black ass adam levine all you need is some wait you play a guitar no, no? i pose with guitars uh, I i'm screaming not, i do not play guitar <laughs> not i do not with. play piano i am tall and black do not play basketball i do not know how to drive i have terrible hand-eye coordination <laughs> not drive what i can do is sing and write the out of a song and you know all that, that other stuff that's all you need i am not good at video games i play the sims i'm screaming. like <laughs> That's all you need. You don't yeah. need all those other These things. These hands and eyes together in collaboration. <laughs> you said don't know how to drive. Driving isn't fun anyways, especially in Atlanta. So there you go. Okay, <laughs> so now this is the thing I make people do. Say something inspiring, um, I don't know, to all the creatives and all the people out there. And look into the, your main focus camera. Okay. For my, all my artists and creatives out there, I'm going to quote the great... Clifford Harris, if you don't give a damn, we don't give a Because if we don't give a damn, they don't give a So true. It's so oof. A bar. I didn't even spit the I felt like it came from here. <laughs> Literally, like, it came from the heart because. Ah. Tell them your social media. Follow me on Instagram at Langston Blue. It's L A N G S T O N B L E U because we fancy. Okay. Same way you do it on Twitter. And if your old ass is still on Facebook, Add me on there and follow me on there. It's Langston Blue, L A N G S T O N space B L E U. My old ass is on Facebook still, too. So, what's up? What's up? But yeah, uh, follow me. And more importantly, to follow me on social media so you can see what I ate for breakfast and the vacation, you should follow me on Spotify and Apple Music and just type in my name, L A N G S T O N space B L E U. Press play, share it with your friends, your family, your mama, your papa, all that good. Shit. Yeah. I love it. And remember to keep watching Dead or Alive. <laughs> oh, yay! Well, thank you guys for watching. Stay woke. Please. I'm Chet, you betcha. Reporting um, live. <laughs> What's happening? It's just getting worse. <laughs> I can't. We're done. Thank you, Langston. <laughs> that was great. Y'all like this video. I don't know. Goodbye. <laughs> subscribe. That's what you saying on the little videos. Like and subscribe to kids. I can't even do that. <laughs> like, like and subscribe. It's going to be a subscribe button like right here. It's right there? I don't know. It could be over here. It's going to be over here. Like and subscribe to this <laughs> Goodbye, goodbye, we're done. Woo!